So hello everyone, welcome to another video on machine learning. Let me start this video by wishing a very happy new year to all of you. I hope uh, that the upcoming year will, will bring lots of joy, prosperity and happiness to each and every one of you. Having said that, let us begin today's video. In our last uh, video, we saw one aspect of unsupervised learning and that was clustering. In this video, we are going to look at a different uh, topic in unsupervised learning. We are going to look at something called association rule mining. So let us begin uh, by looking a bit about what association rule mining is. So association rule mining uh, is a rule based machine learning method for discovering interesting relations between variables in large database. So we are going to look at something called a rule based machine learning method. Alright, now the first question and the most obvious question would be what is a rule and what do we mean by this rule based machine learning. We will answer that very soon. But uh, yeah, let's look at the first line. Uh, association rule mining is a rule based machine learning method for discovering interesting relation between variables in large data set. So we are going to have some sort of a data set like we have in any machine learning problem. All right. And from that we have to uh, find some rules. Okay. So our aim is going to be that we have to identify strong rules. So this rules that we are going to find, there will be lots of different rules. All right. Now, uh, some of these rules will not be very uh, significant. It will not be very important for us. All right. On the other hand, some will be significant. Now, what do we mean by significant? It will uh, be significant using some measure of interestingness. So we are going to find rules which are interesting. In some way. All right. Now, what is a rule? That would be the most obvious question. A rule is a implication of the form A implies B. All right. These kind of implications are called rules. Now, both A and B over here are sets. All right. Sets of different things. For example, A can be a set of movies. So, if A is a set containing one single movie Harry Potter and the uh, Philosopher's Stone okay and B can be a set containing other movies like uh, say three the other six Harry Potter movies or seven Harry Potter movies there are eight Harry Potter movies so what would that mean what would this mean Harry Potter and Prisoner uh, and Philosopher's Stone implies say Harry Potter and set Chamber of Secrets. Right, let's keep it simple right now. This kind of rule would mean this, that if a person watches Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, then there is a high probability that the person is going to watch Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. All right, we will have to generate rules like this from data set. If our data set contains uh, information of what kind of movies people watch then maybe we will go ahead and generate this kind of a rule all right now uh, another rule might be harry potter and the philosopher's stone all right and then uh, i am going to rec recommend harry potter and the chamber of secrets harry potter and prisoner of azkaban and so on all right so if a person watches harry potter and the philosopher's stone i am going to recommend okay uh, uh, Chamber of Secrets, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban and all these other movies. So this would be what this second rule might mean. All right. And then uh, we may have this kind of rule. Well, I have these two movies on the left. Uh, so the person has watched Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The person has watched Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So I am going to uh, recommend the next movie to that person. And that is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. All right. In this way, we have rules. All right. So what is the takeaway from here? The takeaway is this. Uh, a rule is an implication of the form A implies B. When A and B are both set. Now, what 
is this set composed of what is there in this set a and b we will talk about that soon uh, another example of rule that is there on your screen uh, is this okay maybe we have a shop there is a shop and in this shop if a person buys curd and flattened rice then uh, we are going to recommend uh, jaggery to that person right if a person buys doi and sira we are going to recommend goo to that person probably the person after buying doi and sira that person wants to have zolpan all right so we will recommend jaggery so this kind of rule uh, this kind of implications are called rules now uh, we will have data set and from our data set we have to create rules like this all right rules that make sense together now if i have a rule like this say in my shop a person comes to buy a mobile okay and i end up recommending banana to that person this is uh, i don't think this is a rule that makes sense okay so if a person comes to buy mobile uh, if i recommend a mobile cover to that person or i recommend a mobile uh, headphone to that person that would make sense okay but if the person comes to buy a mobile and i recommend a banana to the person that would be bananas right? that would not make sense so how do we get this sense uh, means uh, for me i am a human so based on my experience i can say that mobile implies banana does not make sense but for a computer uh, how will a computer make sense out of all these things that people are buying all right for that we need some measure of interestingness all right and this is what we are going to talk about uh, soon let me give you two more examples of association rule mining that are very popular very uh, frequently used in our day to day life one of them uh, is you see this very often when you go to amazon uh, these things frequently bought together so if you buy go to a page then you would be recommended that if you buy a go to a page uh, of a particular mobile phone you would be shown uh, cover of that mobile phone all right or customer who bought this also bought this all right so if you go to a page uh, to buy arduino maybe they will show you motors and leds uh, relays and all those kind of stuffs all right uh so yeah recommendation engine uh, are applications of association rule mining right another example is over here uh, where uh, in netflix or in youtube you are recommended video based on what you watch all right if you are a uh, if you watch a few uh, left wing videos all right then uh, political left wing videos then you would be recommended left wing videos if you watch right wing videos you would be recommended right wing videos so based on what you like to watch they are going to uh, recommend only those kind of videos all right this is what association rule mining or a recommendation system is going to do now i am not going to make any political statement but uh, this is something to think about right so youtube will do what youtube facebook all the social media they like to show you things that you like to watch and in doing this they push you into a bubble where you only watch videos uh, that agrees with your viewpoint so you live in a bubble you don't really get a idea of what is happening in the real world all right so that is one negative point about uh, these things Right, but uh, that is not the uh, not a thing that we are going to talk about in this course. All right, uh, that is beyond the scope. So uh, let us not spend any more time talking about this. I just wanted to show you two examples where two popular places, Netflix and Amazon, where recommendation system using this uh, rule-based uh, rule association rule-based. Uh, data analysis or okay, is used right. now let us look at the formal definition of association rule mining all right 
and in doing that we will be looking at the data set that you see on the right so this is a data set Alright, this data set contains five rows. So these five rows corresponds to five transactions that happened in a shop. Okay, so a person came into the shop, person number one, that person bought something. Alright, what did the person buy? The person bought a bread and a milk. Okay, so that was your transaction one. Then another person comes in, uh, that person buys bread, diaper, beer and egg. So that was transaction 2. Then another person comes, comes in, buys uh, milk, diaper, beer and juice. So that was transaction 3. Similarly, we have transaction 4 and transaction 5. So there were 5 transactions that took place in the shop. Alright. And then there were uh, each transaction uh, the people bought uh, certain number of things all right so we are going to look at uh, three things over here three sets over here all right the first set is the set of all items that are available in the shop so in our case uh, we have bread all right we have milk we have diaper eggs and we have juice all right so there are five things that uh, somebody is going to buy from this shop all right now uh, <coughs> this set is called the set of items all right so i we are going to denote this set using this capital letter i uh, let i uh, containing uh, this uh, attributes I want to I n be a set of n binary attributes called items. All right. So there are uh, these items that are available on your shop, and the set of all the items that are available in your shop is the set I. All right. Then uh, the set T be the uh, let T be the set of transactions uh, that are there in your database. All right. So in our case, we have five transaction, T1 up to T5, all right. So transaction one uh, was this transaction that contained uh, a bread and milk. Okay, in transaction one, the person bought bread and milk. In transaction five, the person bought bread, uh, milk, diaper and juice. All right, in this way, we have five different transactions. All right, and this, set of all transactions that took place in our case this file uh, this set is denoted by this capital letter t and this is our entire database all right now let us talk about what is each of this element inside this set t all right this t contains all the transaction what is the transaction now each transaction in t has a unique id all right and we have done that we have called this uh, transaction t1 we call this t2 t3 up to t5 so every transaction has a unique id that's fine and what is the transaction it contains a subset of the item in i all right a transaction will contain a subset of the item in i so what is i i is the set of all the items that are available in my shop what is the transaction the things that people are buying all right so a person can buy only things that are available in my shop so a person will buy things all right a couple of things for example in transaction t1 the person is buying bread and milk this set set containing bread and milk this t1 is a set containing element item bread and milk so t1 is a subset of the set of all items right so yeah that is what we have so each ti is a subset of t all right now what is a rule a rule is defined as the implication of the form x implies y all right already talked about that x implies y this should be a rule okay it's a implication of this form what are x and y 
x and y are subsets of i all right for example a rule may be if a person buys diaper go ahead and recommend beer to that person all right so this is a rule here the set x is this set the set containing the element the item diaper and the set y the set on the right uh, is uh, the set that contains the item beer all right so uh, both x and y both the set containing diaper and the set containing beer are subset of the set of all items there are lots of items and x and y are subset of that set of all items all right so this is a rule this kind of statement are rule now i may have another thing i may have if a person buys bread and milk then i am going to suggest uh, what egg to that person all right this may be another rule i may have yet another rule where if, if a person buys juice go ahead and suggest uh, milk and bread to that person this might be yet another set all right yet another rule anyway a rule will contain a set on the left and a set on the right both this set that are there on the left and right we are indicating that by x and y respectively both of them will be subsets of i all right so yeah this kind of rule this kind of implications are called rule all right and what is our task in association rule mining uh, our task is to generate this kind of rule all right uh, from uh, this data set this is our entire data set and by doing running some algorithm on this data set we have to generate this kind of rules right. uh, what does this data set contain the data set contains transaction uh, the data set is a set of transaction what is a transaction a transaction contains all the items that are bought together by a person so a transaction will contain uh, the transaction is a subset of the set of items that are available in the shop all right so this is what it is uh, this is a basic idea behind association rule mining now we are going to talk about two concepts before we go ahead and talk about what are the algorithms that are available and all these kind of things the first concept that we are going to talk about is support all right so what is a support a support is a indication of how frequent the item set appears in a data set so uh, yeah that is what it is how many times do something appear in a data set the support of x with respect to t so x is a set a set of items all right the support of x with respect to t is defined as the proportion of transaction t in the data set which contain the item x all right uh, this may sound like lots of words but uh, this is a very simple idea okay uh, let me give you an example say x is this set containing diaper all right x is the set containing diaper let's work with a set containing only one thing first then we will look at set containing two things all right so x is the set containing diaper all right what is the support of x what does this say for each uh, transaction i will see if x is a subset of the transaction all right i will find how many transactions are there and uh, i will get the cardinality of that let's uh, see uh, this 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 and this there are four transaction out of four total five transaction that contain diapers all right so uh, this my numerator is going to be four how 
what is in my denominator? Denominator is the cardinality of set T. What is set T? T is the set of all transactions. So, how many transactions are there in total? There are 5 transactions in total. Alright, therefore the cardinality of set T is equal to 5. Alright, therefore uh, the support of X, where X is the set containing only diaper, is equal to 4 by 5 and that is equal to 0 0.8. Alright, so this is support. Very simple idea. Let us look at another set. Now let us, uh, let the set be uh, diaper and beer. Alright. So what is the support of X now? Uh, for each transaction, if the transaction contains diaper and beer, we are going to count that. Alright. So this transaction contains diaper and beer. This transaction contains diaper and beer. This transaction contains diaper and beer. So there are three transactions that contains diaper and beer. Alright. Therefore, our numerator is going to be 3. Denominator like before is going to be 5 because there are 5 transactions in total and therefore the support of this set containing diaper and beer is equal to 0 0.6. Alright. So this is support. Alright. What is support of some set? Uh, the number of times that the set appears in my transaction. It's very simple idea. Okay. How many times does the set uh, appear in my transaction? So this is the set diaper and beer. It appears three times here, here and here. So three divided by how many transactions are there in total? There are five transactions in total. Therefore three by five is equal to 0 0.6. All right. Simple idea. This is called support. The next uh, concept that we are going to talk about is this concept of confidence. Right. A confidence is an indication of how often the rule has been found to be true. Okay. So we have some rule. We created this rule, right? Uh, diaper. So if someone buys diaper, go ahead and recommend beer to that person. Okay. <clears throat> so we had created this rule. Now how confident are we about this rule? Okay. So we created this rule, think about it because we believe that if a person buys diaper, the person is going to buy a beer. Okay. Now, if we don't believe that, then why are we going to recommend beer to a person who buys diaper? Now, uh, I have to do one thing. I have to see how confident am I about this rule that I have made. Say, so I believe that a person buys who buys diaper also buys beer. Okay, so diaper and beer are bought together. That is my belief. I have to taste this belief. Okay. So I am going to do a very simple thing. I am going to see how many times is diaper bought. Okay, in total. How many transactions are there that has diaper as one of the purchased item? Out of all these transaction that contains diaper, in how many of them? are diaper and beer bought together okay so if i have 100 transaction uh, diaper is bought by 100 different people in 100 different transaction in 80 of them uh, the person who has bought diaper has also bought beer then my confidence would be out of 100 times when people has bought diaper 80 times people have also bought beer so my confidence would be 80 percent right this is a very simple idea and this is called confidence Confidence is an indication of how often the rule has been found to be true. The confidence value of a rule x implies y with respect to a set of transaction t is the proportion of the transaction that contains x which also contain y. So all this transaction that contain x all right, uh, out of all this transaction how many also contain y. Alright. So let us go ahead and uh, figure out what is the confidence of this rule. Okay. So to do that, first I have to do what? I have to find how many transactions are there that contain. Uh, let me not uh, do it here. Let me write here itself. 
Okay, how many transactions are there when diaper are bought? Okay, so out of this five, this, 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 and this, there are four transactions where diaper is bought. So out of four, how many transactions are there where among all these transactions where diaper is bought, how many transactions are there when beer is also bought? So there are this, this, and this. All right. So there are three out of these four transactions where beer is also bought. Therefore, my confidence is 0 0.75. All right. So this is what it is. Now, <coughs> uh, this is the mathematical formula, just formula using support. But this is essentially the same thing. Uh, what is the support of X? Support of X is, what is X? X is diaper, Y is beer. Support of X is, uh, how many transactions contain X? X is diaper, there are four transactions that contain X, divided by total number of transaction, that is four by five, this is support of X. And what is support of X union Y? X union Y is the set that contains diaper and beer. All right. X is the set contain diaper, Y is the set containing beer, X union Y is the set containing diaper and beer. So how many times, what is the support of X union Y? What is the support of this set containing diaper and beer? We have to count. There are one, two, three. Three times, uh, these two are bought together. How many transactions are there? There are five total transactions. Therefore, the support of X union Y is three by five. All right, and this is equal to three by four and that is equal to 0 0.75 all right so this is uh, the formula using support all right but then uh, we don't actually need to divide by total number of transaction to find support because uh, we will be div uh, the total number of transaction is anyway a constant throughout our algorithm the number of transaction uh, is not going to change all right if we are working with a data set with 1000 transaction then throughout my analysis my data set is going to contain 1000 transactions. So, uh, dividing both numerator and denominator by 1000 is an unnecessary calculation that I don't need to do. So, uh, that is going to cancel out, right? Uh, anyway, so without doing that, also I can uh, go ahead and do this calculation. And yeah, that is what we have. Okay. In this uh, lecture, in this video, we are going to look at three different algorithms using which we are going to do association rule mining. All right. The first algorithm is a priori algorithm. The second algorithm is going to be FP growth algorithm. We are going to uh, talk a little bit about this algorithm. We are not going to look at lots of theory. Don't worry. We are directly going to apply this algorithm on data sets and in doing that, we will be learning about how this algorithm works and then uh, we'll be looking at something called uh, and uh, the eclat algorithm all right the eclat algorithm i will uh, this is also very simple all these algorithms are simple fp growth is a bit uh, involved still simple all right uh, so we'll be looking at all this algorithm but eclat algorithm we will not uh, work uh, on a data set i will just show you a worked example right. the rest of uh, the other two we are going to uh, do this on our own <laughs> so let us begin talking about a priori algorithm so a priori algorithm uh, is designed to operate on databases containing transaction like the database that we just saw and each transaction uh, is a collection of items bought by customer each transaction is seen as a set of items a set of item is also called item set all right now we will be given a threshold all right this threshold is called mean support All right, uh, so we will be given a threshold C. This is our mean support. So in a priori algorithm, we will uh, work and do this. Uh, anything below this threshold, we are going to ignore. Values support greater than this threshold, we are going to use uh, in our next round of analysis.
Alright, what does this mean? You will see soon when I work on this data set. But imagine this. Alright. Now there is this shop, my shop. In my shop, I want to do analysis. Okay. What is the analysis that I want to do? Items that are frequently bought together. So I want to do a general analysis of the buying pattern of my customers. All right. Now if say a item is bought two or three times only, very few times. All right. So I am selling, uh, I am doing thousands of transactions every day. And there is this item that is bought only twice or thrice. Say a television, a very expensive brand television, smart TV. That is not sold uh, very often. All right. Now, uh, the problem if I try to do analysis with this television is this. Uh, I want to know about the general buying pattern of the entire population of lots of people. All right. Now, if I use this particular television that is bought by only one or two people, what will happen is I will learn about the buying pattern of only those one or two, one or two people. All right. Therefore, uh, things that are very rarely bought, okay, things that are bought very rarely, uh, I am not going to uh, try finding patterns of those things. All right. So, I will be having some threshold, this mean support. So, things that are bought less than the mean support, I am not going to use those things for further analysis. And that is the basic idea behind this threshold. All right. So only items that are bought together frequently, items that are bought often. Okay. Not often, but uh, more than this threshold uh, level. So only those items I am going to do an analysis on. All right. So given a threshold, a priori algorithm is going to identify item sets which are subset of at least three this many number of transactions. Right. Now a priori is going to have a bottom-up approach. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in my shop, uh, first I will start from the bottom. So what does this mean? I am going to uh, see items one at a time. Okay, so first I will see how many mobiles are. So if uh, say iPhone, okay, so iPhone 12. So how many uh, iPhone 12s are bought? Say there are 50 iPhone 12s that are being bought. Okay, say my threshold is 25. So I, uh, mobile is above this threshold. So I am going to consider mobile for the next round of analysis. Okay, and my very expensive smart TV, okay, is bought only once. So my threshold was 25. So smart TV, I am not going to uh, consider for the next round of analysis. All right, because it is below my threshold. Now I am done and uh, looking at one item at a time. Okay, so I looked at mobile. It was bought more than uh, 25 times, more than my threshold level. So I'm going to consider it for the next round. Smart TV, less than the threshold number of times. Uh, purchase less than the threshold number of time, I'm not going to consider it for the next round. All right. So I'm done looking at items one at a time. Now I'm going to next look at items two at a time. So I see, I'm going to consider this iPhone, right? So I'm going to see that iPhone and uh, iPhone cover is bought maybe uh, 40 times. So iPhone was bought 50 times, iPhone and iPhone out of all these 50 times when iPhone was bought. I see that iPhone and mobiles, they are bought together 40 times. All right. Uh, iPhone and cover are bought together 40 times. So this is greater than my threshold. My threshold was 25. So iPhone and mobile, I'm going to consider uh, it. All right. Then I see iPhone and banana, this fruit banana is bought together only two times uh, or five times. Okay. Some customer maybe was hungry and after buying the iPhone, uh, he did not have much money left. So he bought a banana. Okay. So I see uh, it was bought only two times. So it is below my threshold. So I am not going to consider it for the next round. All right. So in this round, I am I looked at items two at a time. Uh, item set containing two items. All right. Then 
uh, in this round what did I do I eliminated iPhone and banana I am going to consider iPhone and uh, iPhone cover all right then I am going to go into the next round in my next round I am going to take items three at a time so I am going to say consider mobile phone uh, this iPhone then mobile cover and headphone okay uh, hold on okay uh, my house is by the side of the road and there was some announcement uh, so sorry for the interruption you did not see the interruption because I posted the recording anyway uh, yeah I was talking about working with uh, two sets right we ignored this set uh, containing um, iPhone and banana we are moving ahead with this set containing item set containing uh, iPhone and uh, iPhone cover now we are going to look at uh, item set containing three items all right and then we will eliminate uh, three item sets say iPhone mobile cover and refrigerator bought five times less than my threshold going to eliminate them iPhone uh, mobile cover and headphone bought together more than uh, say 30 times more than my threshold so going to consider it for the next round so this is an iterative process using which we are going to generate these item sets that are bought frequently together okay so what is our idea of item sets that are bought frequently together item set that has uh, that are bought together more than this threshold number of times this mean support number of times we are going to uh, say that those are frequently bought together uh, item sets that are less than threshold number of times we are going to say those are not uh, frequently bought together all right so in this way we first uh, consider item set of only one item item set of two item then three then four we are going to iteratively uh, create uh, increase uh, the size of our item set by one item uh, in each round all right and when do we stop we stop when we cannot create an item set of larger size. All right. So say we have come to this point where uh, item set uh, containing iPhone, um, iPhone, mobile cover, and headphone. Okay, is uh, above my threshold. Uh, we found that in our last round. Okay. Then in the next round, we try to create item set with these three item and more item one more item okay now we are trying to create item set with four item now what do i see i see that uh, no matter which four item set i make i can uh, my count is not going above this threshold okay so i end my algorithm at that point now uh, there is one more thing that i want to talk about okay say iphone and banana is bought less than the threshold number of times okay bought only two times so iphone and banana purchased together only two times now do i consider a set iphone banana and headphone okay for in the next round in my previous round i saw that iphone and banana those things together do not cross my threshold so if i consider a three set okay even iPhone and banana is not bought 25 times. So is it possible that iPhone, banana and headphone will be bought more than 25 times? It is not possible, right? Because iPhone and banana itself is not bought, uh, bought more than 25 times. So uh, the set that I eliminated in my previous round, okay. Any set that contains those set that I eliminated, I am not going to consider in the next round. So in this way, I do a little bit of uh, saving on my computation all right so this is called pruning we are going to do those things as well you know uh, this is the basic idea behind a priori if you uh, did not understand it properly yet don't worry we will be applying this on a data set and apply after we apply this on a data set I hope your understanding of the algorithm will be more crystal clear all right so a priori uses a bottom-up approach where frequent subset are extended one item at a time so this process of generating sets 
set of one item, then set of two item, item sets of three item. All right. Uh, this is known as candidate generation. All right. And then uh, we test this uh, group of candidates. So how many times uh, this item set occur in the uh, data set? We do those testing. Uh, the algorithm terminates when no further successful extensions are found. And this is uh, the things that I just talked about. It's written uh, over here. So yeah, this is uh, a priori. Let us go ahead and apply a priori on this data set. All right. This data set contain five transactions. Transaction ID number one, two, five. All right. Then we have these items, uh, milk, tea, cake, Pepsi, and juice. Okay, our mean support is 0 0.4. So our mean support is 40%. Okay, now let us remember what is support. Support is support of X is So number of times this item set X will be uh, uh, appearing in my data set in different transaction. In how many transaction does uh, X appear? All right, divided by total number of transaction. All right. So that is the idea behind support. Now understand one thing: uh, we are going to divide everything by the same number, right? Here we have total five transaction. So to find support, we have to divide everything by five. Okay. So we are going to look at uh, uh, this thing. Uh, this threshold mean support is our threshold. All right. So we have to find support of every item and every item set. And uh, if the support is below my threshold. Then I am going to eliminate it. If it is above my threshold, I am going to consider it. All right. So yeah, that is something that I am going to do. But I am going to save a little bit of calculation by not dividing by total number of uh, transaction. Okay. So anyway, uh, to not divide by transaction. Okay. So I have to. Uh, convert this mean support to support count. So I am going to find mean support count. Okay. So 40% uh, what is my mean support? What does this say? It says that my, uh, my threshold is 40%. Okay. So my item set must appear in 40% of the transaction. Alright. So what does uh, this correspond to? I have five transaction and 40% of five transaction is two. Therefore, my mean support is equal to two. Okay, mean support count is equal to two. If uh, a item set appears two times, that means uh, it has uh, appeared in 40% of the transaction. So my uh, threshold is satisfied. If it appears two times or more than two number of times. If it appears less than two times, that means my uh, support, uh, my threshold is not satisfied. I'm going to eliminate that. Right? So that is basic idea. We will talk uh, more about the, this in the next slide. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, <coughs> take all this item, okay, and uh, write it in this table. So in this table, I am going to write all the items that are available. Okay, so what are the items that are available? I have milk, then I have uh, eggs, tea, Pepsi, juice, cake. So in my first round, I am going to consider item set containing only one item. 
these are item sets containing only one items each all right so now i am going, uh, considering item set containing one item all right now uh, what do i have to find i have to find support of each item okay i am going to find support count of each item so support uh, of milk support count of milk is how many times do milk appear here here yeah two times how many times do a appear one two three three times how many times do t appear one two three three times again how many times is pepsi appearing in my data set one two three three times all right how many times is juice appearing only once how many times is cake appearing only once okay my mean support is 0.4 i have to find support all right uh, i am not going to do this but uh, using only support you not using support count let me show you once and then i will uh, be using the easier technique of using support count instead of using support so right now i have only mean support i did not find support count okay uh, so here i have written support count i have to cut uh, convert each of them into support so i have to divide by total number of transaction all right so i am going to divide by total number of transaction and then what is happening this is equal to 0.4 this is equal to 0.6 this is equal to 0.6 this is equal to 0.6 this is equal to 0.2 and this is equal to 0.2 all right so i have found all this support of all this item all this item sets right now this item set contain only one item uh, how many of uh, how many of them satisfy my threshold this is four uh, milk is four so is it uh, greater than or equal to my threshold yes therefore this satisfies my threshold this is greater than my threshold it satisfies this satisfies and this satisfies my threshold okay juice and cake what is the support 0 0.2 okay so support is 0 0.2 uh, my mean support is 0 0.4 so juice and cake the support is not satisfied all right the support count is not satisfied therefore this and this i am going to eliminate in the next round okay so this is what i do this is how i generate item set and then test in my data set and uh, whether it satisfies this testing and whether it, uh, it is equal to or greater than my threshold or not all right now uh, let me make things a bit easier this are the count of two this are the count of three three is this also three yeah three and one and one okay let me not divide by five uh, what i'm going to do this support i'm going to find support count so support count was equal to 5 so 0 0.4 support in this transaction uh, means 40 percent of my transactions should contain the item that means 40 percent of five transaction means two transaction two of these transactions should contain my item all right so milk is satisfied like before all of these are satisfied these two are not satisfied like before now only thing is that uh, previously i found support now i am working with support count i did not divide by five all right the so simple uh, saving on computation all right so this is what i have done what is the next thing that i have to do i have to eliminate juice and cake okay so i am done with my first round of uh, a priori algorithm all right right now i have items that are free item sets okay all of these are i am calling this item easy to call this item because there are only one things but these are actually sets each of them is a set containing only one item okay so these are item sets think of this as set not as item okay. but then there is only one so easy to say item right. uh, the next thing that i am going to do this round is over in my next round, I am going to consider set this item set containing two items. So let us go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, one thing that I have to do is uh, I have to eliminate. Okay. Done eliminating. 
Okay, now I am going to consider items uh, of two sets. Okay, uh, means uh, item set containing two items. So uh, let me create this first milk and eggs. So set containing milk and egg, then set containing milk and tea, then set containing milk and Pepsi. Do I consider set containing milk and juice? Okay, what am I going to do? I am going to find items that are frequently bought together. Wow, what is my measure of frequent? If this mean support count, if items are bought together, item set is uh, has a support count of two if item is bought more than this item set is purchased together more than two times then i am going to say that uh, it is frequent using some sense of frequentness okay now uh, here is uh, something to consider okay juice is bought only once all right. it, out of all this transaction, only one transaction contain this item juice. So juice by itself did not satisfy my threshold. My threshold was two. Okay, I am trying to find item set that are going to satisfy my threshold. So is it possible that milk and juice will satisfy my threshold? Think about it. Juice itself is purchased once. So milk and juice together can be purchased only once, right? It cannot be purchased more than once. Otherwise, juice purchase will also be more than once. So juice itself did not satisfy my threshold. So milk and juice together, juice alone did not satisfy. So I am making it more restrictive by combining milk and juice. These two together, how can it satisfy? Okay. <coughs> Therefore, I do not need to consider this. Any set that contain juice and any set that contain cake can never satisfy my threshold. All right, because this item alone did not satisfy my threshold. So this item combined with something else, how can it satisfy my threshold? Therefore, I do not need to consider any set containing milk or any set containing juice. I do not need to consider this item set. All right, let me remove this. Fine. Next, uh, what is remaining? I have to make this item set. X and T and X and Pepsi. Done. Next, only one is remaining. T and Pepsi. Done. These are all the possible uh, to uh, item item sets all right now i have to find support support count i can use a uh, find support that is divide support count by number of transaction all right and then uh, compare with mean support but uh, like before i am going to find support i am not going to do this division uh, so let's go ahead and uh, find the support how many times is milk and egg appearing in the data set uh, so milk and egg first Milk and egg is appearing here only once. How many times is milk and tea appearing together? Milk and tea is over here. Milk and tea is over here. So two times. Yeah. How many times is milk and Pepsi appearing together? Uh, this is milk and Pepsi over here only one time. How many times is egg and tea appearing together? Egg and tea is over here. Egg and tea is over here two times. How many times is egg and Pepsi appearing together? Egg and Pepsi is over here. Egg and Pepsi is over here. Egg and Pepsi is over here. Okay, so three times. How many times is tea and Pepsi appearing together? Two times. All right. So do this count for yourself. Tea and Pepsi over here. Tea and Pepsi over here two times okay so i have found the support now what do i do i do this test 
test against this threshold what is my threshold 2 mm -hmm. so uh, support count mean support count is 2 so item set with support count less than 2 I'm going to eliminate them so I'm going to eliminate this item set containing milk and egg and I'm going to eliminate this item set containing milk and Pepsi all right so now I have generated this frequent item set containing uh, this four frequent item set so this 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 and this what does this mean I see that eggs and Pepsi are often bought together okay so I am going to say eggs and Pepsi these are frequent item set okay these are frequently bought together okay so this is uh, bought together three times then a and t this is bought together two time then milk and tea two time then t and pepsi two time okay <coughs> So this is how I have generated the item sets which are frequently bought together. Right now in this round I am looking at item sets that contain two items. All right. So I have this sets. Now uh, let us consider this frequent item set. Okay. Uh, did I generate association rule yet? A rule is a implication of this form x implies y. I still do not have x implies y okay so uh, there are two possibilities over here I can do x implies Pepsi and I can do Pepsi implies x so a person who has bought x also bought Pepsi a person who bought Pepsi also bought x okay these are two uh, uh, rules that I can generate using this frequent item set. Similarly, using this frequent item set, I can generate other rules as well. Okay, so that is how I generate rules. Now, there are more intricacies over here. Okay, is both of them do I select both of them or do I prefer one over the other? All right, so if I have to select one rule, which one do I select? and uh, there are more examples that we have to take and look at a few internet details that we will talk about at the very end of this video okay now our focus is on getting this set of items that are frequently bought together we will be looking at uh, how to generate rules later on okay so let us go ahead we have uh, generated item sets these these this and this that are frequently bought together this item set containing two item next let us go ahead and uh, do this okay so done we have created these four item sets now let us go ahead and generate item set containing three items okay now uh, let me try to create the first item set say item set containing milk eggs and tea do i consider this item set do i scan my data set to find how many times this appears in my data set what is the support count of this i have to find the support count of this and then i have to check against my mean support to see if uh, the threshold is satisfied okay do i do all this calculation or lots of computation has to be done see milk and egg these two together is bought only once okay so milk egg and tea this three item cannot be more than once that has to make sense right milk and tea itself is bought only one time so milk, egg and tea, these three items together cannot be more than one thing. Okay. So I do not need to consider this. 
what do I consider? Anything that contain milk and tea, any set that contain milk and Pepsi, I can eliminate. Alright. Any set that contain juice, any set that contain cake, I can eliminate. So I will take only those sets that do not contain any of this item. Okay. So let me go ahead and find one of those sets. There is only one set that is possible. Okay, and that is eggs. T and Pepsi. Okay. <clears throat> so let me see how many times these three appear together. X T and Pepsi is brought together here once. X T and Pepsi is brought together here once. So support is two, means support is satisfied, and we can we have this frequency set. You can uh, try for your uh, for yourself and try to find other frequency set. Uh, other item set uh, containing three items that uh, has a support uh, greater than or equal to two, uh, greater than or equal to the threshold. So do that for yourself, okay? And when trying to generate this item set, uh, remember this thing: if you take the item set containing juice or cake, okay, you will not be able to satisfy the threshold. If you take item set that contain milk and egg or milk and Pepsi, you will not be able to satisfy the threshold. I hope you think about it. What support means, how we are calculating support. Okay, don't just uh, look at method to, calcul uh, to calculate, try to understand what we are calculating. Okay, so I cannot force that into your mind. You have to really uh, sit with a pen and paper and think. Okay, there is nothing that can substitute for thinking. Okay, I cannot, I can just teach. I cannot do the thinking for you. You have to think on your own. So think. Okay, why we are doing this pruning? Why we are doing this elimination? Why we are not taking uh, any three item set containing milk and egg? Okay, so try to find some other uh, three item set. Uh, I, am, I found only one uh, frequently bought item set containing this three item and then <coughs> uh, I am unable to find any four item set. So if I take X, T, Pepsi and anything, okay, uh, say milk. So this contains egg and milk and egg and milk was already uh, if I buy egg and milk together, then I will not be able to satisfy. So egg and milk, this contain egg and milk. I am not able to satisfy. This uh, support is only one. Okay. My threshold will not be satisfied. And if I take anything else, my instead of milk, if I take anything else, my uh, support will be zero. Okay. That will also not satisfy the threshold. So there is not going to be any four items set that I can generate. Okay, right now I am able to generate this one three item item set. So I will be able to do this. If uh, X and T are brought together, so let me create a rule, suggest Pepsi. Or if X and uh, Pepsi is brought together, suggest T. If Pepsi and T is brought together, suggest A. Okay, these are the kind of rules that I will be able to generate. Or in an extreme case, I can do this. If Pepsi is what suggest X and T. Okay, these are also rules that I can generate. Okay, now uh, if I keep on generating rules like this, I will be ending up generating lots of rules. Okay, so not all of these rules are going to make sense. Out of all these rules that are possible, which make sense and which do not make sense, we are going to talk about that at the very end of this video. Okay, so fine. This is a priori algorithm. Okay, up to this point, what we have done? First, we uh, looked at item set containing only one item. Okay, we found uh, their support, 
we tested against the mean support count then we eliminated uh, this item set containing only one item we eliminated those which did not satisfy this threshold then we created two item item set containing two item we do, did this test again we eliminated again and then we created item set containing three item did the test again eliminated again then we saw that we cannot create any item set containing four item okay at that point we are stopping our algorithm we have created item set frequent item set item sets that are frequently bought together okay items that are frequently bought together this item set of three items and this item set containing four items ah, sorry two items this four item set containing two items all right so this is what we did up to this point this is what we are going we have done in a priori algorithm now let us talk a little bit more about a priori algorithm before we move on to the next topic okay remember we did not generate rules yet okay our main target in this video is to generate association rules not to generate frequent item set frequent item set is the mid stage of what we are doing okay our ultimate aim is something else that we will do at the very end of this video but let us generate this frequent item set right now okay because all these item uh, all these algorithms are going to generate frequent item set so these algorithms are different but which from this frequent item set which uh, rule to generate that uh, is common between all these algorithm okay so lots of ideas in there we are going to talk about that at the very end now let me end this part about a priori algorithm by talking a little bit about some issues that are there. Okay, a priori is very ineffective. Why? Because if there are n number of items, then there are going to be 2 to the power n number of possible subset of this item. So there might be 2 to the power n number of different uh, item sets that we can generate out of this n. Now this is not exactly 2 to the power n because uh, uh, we are never going to consider an item set containing no item. So null we are never going to consider. So it is actually at max going to be 2 to the power n minus 1. But then for all practical purpose uh, it is still exponential not going to make a major difference to the number of computation that we have to do. All right. Now yeah this is true that we will do pruning this is true that we are going to do we are going to stop much earlier we are not going to create all to do to power n but this is still a large number of calculation all right this strategy of generating this candidate candidate generation generating this sub item set and then uh, counting uh, finding the support count and then testing against the mean support lots of tasks is there and for each uh, item set uh, right, that we generate we have to scan the data set once and find the count so we have to do lots of scanning of the data set all right that is another problem so generate and test is a large uh, is a ineffective thing then candidate generation will generate a large number of subset exponential number of subset that is another problem and then uh, this the algorithm is going to scan the data set to count to find the support count we have to scan the data set all right and we have to do this for each generated item set so this is also problematic all right uh, if our data set is in hard drive then what is going to happen in our, in our secondary memory we have to take it to our ram and then we have to from ram we have to take it to cache but uh, forget cache say we are counting directly in RAM, still we have to bring everything from hard drive, count, take, uh, uh, remove it, then take more from hard drive. Okay, if we have TBs of data and we have say only a few GB of RAM, okay, then uh, several times if we scan the data set, we have to bring everything to RAM several times, do computation 
and then it's the next time we have to bring it to rank again do computation right. this is this is very ineffective all right the algorithm assumes that the data set is there permanently in our ram okay so if the data set is entirely there in our ram then uh, this transfer of data from hard drive to ram that is going to be saved and now remember one thing hard drive is very slow okay it's a mechanical device that rotates all right unlike electronic electronic device works in light speed but uh, mechanical hard drive is uh, mechanical it is a physical thing that rotates it cannot be that fast light speed okay now we have ssd that's a different type of hard drive that is electronic no mechanical part inside but then ssd is so expensive you cannot uh, have big data kind of calculation in SSD. Okay, that does not make sense. Okay, uh, you cannot spend that much money on doing this computation. Uh, so if you uh, if your computation takes more money than the profit that your company is going to make, that uh, that will not be efficient thing to do. Uh, so these are some problem with a priori. All right. So because of this problem. We are going to look at a different algorithm that uh, tries to minimize some of these problems. Okay, so we will be looking at the next algorithm uh, now. Okay. The algorithm that removes the problem that a priori has is the FP growth algorithm. I mean, there are other algorithms, but uh, we are going to look at FP growth algorithm. All right. So let's talk a bit about FP growth algorithm. Uh, the full form is frequent pattern uh, growth algorithm. It is a method of finding frequent patterns, these frequent item sets that we found in priori. We can find them using FP growth as well. But uh, the difference is that uh, here we do that using, uh, without doing this candidate generation. All right. So we could potentially generate a exponential number of uh, item sets in uh, a priori here we are not going to do that so that is a very big saving in uh, computation right in a priori we generated up to uh, a max of uh, 2 to the power n minus 1 uh, item sets we will not generate that okay because we will stop early we are going to do pruning in a priori there are lots of techniques in a priori uh, because of which we do not reach this theoretical maxima, but then uh, that is a possibility. We could reach that maxima, right? And then for each of the item set that we generate, each of the generated candidate, okay, what we did was we scanned the data set and then uh, we counted the support, right? And then we did a testing against this mean support. Now we are not going to do all those kind of things in FP growth. All right, we are not going to generate uh, candidates. All right, so that is one major uh, advantage in FP growth. All right, so here, instead of doing all those things, we are going to create something called a FP tree, frequent pattern tree. So we are going to create a tree-like structure rather than uh, this generate and test strategy that we did uh, in April. So the FP3 is the compressed representation of the item set uh, database. So all these generated uh, item sets that we have in a priori, we put that into a data set and we use that data set to generate uh, association rule. So all these kind of things we are not going to do. We will have a tree. The tree is going to be a compressed representation. The tree is going to contain all this information. All right? the, uh, that is one big advantage. The tree structure not only reserves the item set in uh, the database, but also keep tracks of the association between uh, these item sets. All right. So yeah, we are going to create a tree and we are going to use this tree to generate association rules in FP growth. So let us look at a data set and let us apply FP growth algorithm on that data set in order to find frequent item sets. This is the data set that we will be working with. Uh, the mean support we have decided is going to be 0 
So 50% is going to be the main support. And since there are six transactions in my data set, 50% uh, of six is equal to three. So mean support count is going to be three. All right. Now I have five items in my data set. My item set is equal to A, B, C, D, E. These are the, all the items that are available in my shop. All right. Now the first thing that I have to do is I have to create a table with this item set and find the support of each item, the support count of each item. So let us go ahead and do that. All right. So this is the table that we have created. I have all the items over here, all these five items that were there in my item set. Let me go ahead and calculate the support of A. So A occurs here, 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 and here. So A occurs four times in my uh, data set, in my uh, set of transaction. So my support is going to be, support count is going to be four. B occurs here. Here, 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 and okay, not here. This is not B, this is D. And here, okay, so B is occurring five times. And in this way, I'm going to count how many times each of the item is occurring in my data set. And uh, after counting, I will be filling up this table. So let's go ahead and complete this table. And this is the count that I got. Right. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what are the counts of each of the item. This has a count of 4, this has a count of 5, 4 and 4 respectively. And then I see that E has a count of 2. All right. Now, E's count is, uh, E's support count is less than the mean support that we had taken. Mean support was 50%, which was equal to 3. But E has a support count of 2. Therefore, I'm going to remove E. Okay. I am not going to take E any more uh, in my calculation. So let's go ahead and do that. I have removed E from my data set, going to remove. I have crossed out E at least. That is something that I have done. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this table in a descending manner. All right, uh, using this support count. Right. Based on this support count, I'm going to do the sorting of this table. So let's go ahead and do that. I have done the sorting. <coughs> okay, this is the sorted table. Now you may uh, have this uh, question. This is one sorted order that is fine. First I have B, then A, then C and D. But this is also sorted, right? B, C, A, D. This is also sorted. B has a support of 5, C, A and D. All of them have support of 4. All right, so this is also sorted. Now, uh, why do I prefer this over this? Why should I prefer this over this? There is no reason. You can as well choose this order. All right, but here is the thing. Once you have chosen an order, whether you choose this to be a sorted order or this to be a sorted order, whichever order you choose, you have to stick to it. I am going to choose this. All right, so I am going to stick to B, A, C, D. This is the order in which I have sorted my items and till the end of my algorithm, I am going to stick to this order. Now, I am not going to do this. So, somewhat in the middle of my algorithm, I am not going to change my order. Say, for some time, I am using this order and some other point of time, somewhere in the middle, I start using this order. That is something that I cannot do. All right. Once I have chosen an order, I have chosen this order, this order. This is the same order, the both of them. Right. Once I have chosen an order, I have to stick to that order till the end of my uh, algorithm, right? Till I finish running this al algorithm. So this is the order that I have chosen. Now, what I have to do is, all these uh, things that are there in my uh, data set, all these transactions that are there in my data set, I have to reorder them, all right? according to this order all right for example there is a b c over here okay but here according to this order b should come before a and c should come after a all right so i'm going to do that instead of writing a b c i'm going to write b a c because this is the order that is given to me by the sorted order the order that i have decided 
Correct. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's order each of this transaction. The order that I have chosen is B A C D. B A C D. So B A C D. That is the order in which I had sorted my items. Now let us go ahead and order uh, my transaction according to this order. All right. So here A B C will be ordered to B A C. B C D will be ordered to B C D. This was already ordered. D E will be ordered to. This is interesting. E I am no longer considering. Right. E I have removed. E was purchased uh, very few number of times. So I cannot. Uh, I believe that I cannot get any meaningful idea of the buying pattern of people who buys this item. This item is rarely purchased. So no point trying to find uh, the pattern in which people buy this item. All right. So E I am not going to consider. D is the only item that I am going to consider in this transaction. In this transaction. All right. Fine. Let's move ahead. This transaction I have A, B, D. I have to order according to this. So I first will be B, then A, and then D. Then this I have to order. First will be B, then A, then C, and E. I do not consider. All right. We already talked about this. So E I am not going to consider. Then I have A, B, C, D. So first will be B, then A, then C, then D. Right. This is the order that we have. Okay, fine. <clears throat> we have done ordering. Now we are ready to create a tree. Okay. This is the order in which we had ordered uh, all this uh, transaction. Our or this was our original uh, set of data set of transaction. This is our new order set of data set of transaction, and we have removed the items whose Support count is less than our threshold, our mean support. All right, so we have done this. Next, let us create the tree. Okay. First thing first, our root node in FP tree is always going to be null. Root node is not going to contain anything. Okay. Uh, you will understand uh, the reason, the semantic of this uh, very soon. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, work right now. Work on creating this tree. The first transaction I'm going to enter into this tree. First transaction contain B, A, C. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert each of these item into the tree one by one. First, I'm going to insert B. Okay. Uh, so is uh, there a child of this root node? containing b there is no child of root node at all right so there is no question of a child node containing b so let's go ahead and create this child node of b with b this will be the child of the root node now this is the first time that i am uh, reaching this node okay therefore the count how many times did i reach here only once okay now I have done inserting B into my tree. Next I am going to insert A. Okay. And A comes after B. So A's parent will be B. Okay. So I am going to create A over here. B does not have a child called A. Therefore I am creating this node. Okay. I am reaching this node for the first time. I am going to write 1 over here. Then I have to uh, create this node C. Is there a node C that uh, C's parent will be A? Is there a node C? Does this A have a child with uh, level C? It does not. Therefore, I am going to create a node C and I am reaching this for the first time. Done. So B, A, C, I have entered into my tree. Fine. Next, let me go ahead and enter the next item. Next item is B, C, D. D's parent will be C, C's parent will be B, and B's parent will be null. Okay. So let's start with null. Does null have a child with level B? Yes, null has a child with level B. 
so I reach here I am reaching this again okay uh, I had reached this once before so that is what this count represented I am reaching here again so I am going to increment this count by 1 so let's go ahead and do that this is now 2 okay done I have uh, had handled this B <coughs> now I need to handle this C so is there a C that is a child of B there is a C over here that is a child of A and A is a child of B but I want a C that is a child of this B but B does not have a child called C right so I am going to go ahead and create this child C and I am reaching this node for the first time now I have to enter this D and this D's parent is C ok so this C's child I am going to have a D over here and I am reaching this as well for the first time I am done handling this <coughs> now I am going to insert this D ok uh, this D's parent is null ok so is there uh, does uh, null have a child with the level D no it does not so I am going to go ahead and create a, a child of null with level D and I am reaching this node for the first time ok so I am going to put one over there It's done handling this then I'm going to insert this B A D so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to insert B then A and then D B's parent will be null okay so B's parent is null A's parent will be B and this parent will be A does null have a child called B yes null has a child called B so I'm going to increment uh, the count that we had associated with this node I'm reaching this again I am reaching this node for the third time then uh, does B have a child called A yes B has a child called A now I have reached here I am reaching this for the second time I increment this from 1 to 2 ok so you may have guessed this number keeps track of how many times I have reached this node alright next uh, let us insert D so does a this a i was here this is the parent so does d i have to insert now and uh, this parent will be a so does a have a child called d it does not so let us go ahead and create this child and i am reaching this for the first time fine this is what i have then let me insert this b a c so first i will go here to this b I have to increment I am reaching this for the fourth time I am incrementing this then I have to reach this A I am reaching this for the third time let me increment this then I am reaching this C and so from 1 this will be 2 so I have reached B then A then C and uh, once I have reached a node I have incremented the count ok now let me handle this B A C D uh, <coughs> so first I have to insert B B's parent is uh, nobody so null so I have reached here I am incrementing this count to 5 then A A's parent has to be B so B has a child called A so I am incrementing this to 4 then C C's parent is A so from 2 I am going to increment uh, the count to 3 I have reached here and then I need to reach this node D uh, this parent is going to be this C ok but C does not have a child called D so I am making this child D and I have set this count to 1 alright so this is how I have created this tree now uh, let us look at this tree in depth a little bit so let us look at a proper uh, diagram representing this tree. Right, so this is what we have. Now uh, all these nodes and edges are same as what we saw in our previous slide that we just drew. But then apart from that you may see edges, dashed edges like this. Don't worry about this right now. Okay. Uh, 
uh, you will understand what these are uh, very soon but let's look at uh, the tree and this table this table is called the header table this contains all the items in the order in which we had sorted them b a c d it contains the support file and then we have this tree now let us uh, understand what this means okay if i look at this note fine how am i reaching this note from null i am reaching b then from b i am reaching a and then from a i am reaching c okay so b then a and then c this is the path that i am taking to reach this note right and what is the count associated with this note three what does this mean this means that there are three transactions where a b and c are purchased together so this is one transaction this is one transaction and this is one transaction with b a c all right so there are three transactions where b a and c are purchased together all right so that is what this means now uh, let us look at what this means okay if i look at this note uh, its parent is b okay it has a count of 4 that means there are four transactions where b and a are purchased together okay so this is what that means this is what each of the note mean another interesting thing to observe would be this this is a c and this is a c this has a value of 3 and this has a value of 1 3 plus 1 is equal to 4 and that is the support of c right this is a d this is d this is d and this is d there are four d's so uh, when i add all of this all of these four d's have a value equal to 1 count equal to 1 okay when i add all of them i end up with 4 which is the support uh, similarly 4 is over here and 5 is over here so if i have more than one uh, node representing one item when i add all of these nodes i will end up with uh, the support right when i add up the count to all of these nodes okay now let's uh, let me repeat what i just said with one more uh, note see this d how did i reach this d i went from null to b from b to c and from c to d so i took b c d that means what this b c d is purchased together in how many transaction in only one transaction so b c d is purchased together in one transaction hold on yeah bcd is purchased once together in one transaction but then bcd is purchased here as well but that is a uh, four item uh, frequency right in three item frequency it is purchased once over here okay so this is what it means this is how how this tree is giving us this information of what are the items that are purchased together and how many times now uh, yeah this is one thing to observe bcd is purchased together once over here bcd is purchased together once over here okay in this four frequency so this bcd the fact that bcd is purchased together in two transaction is not yet recorded properly okay so we have to do that so let's go ahead and uh, try to Uh, compress these different branches into one uh, information right the fact that this transaction is uh, we, once when bcd is purchased together the fact that this four transaction contains bcd purchased together let's go ahead and work more with this tree and try to find more information from this tree okay and to do that we have to create a table now this table uh, 
there is no name for this table but there are four headers all right one is the item another is conditional pattern based conditional fp3 and frequent pattern generated so this is our ultimate aim this frequent item sets that we have to generate okay along with the support of this frequent item set so let's go ahead and uh, handle one column at a time all right the first column that we have is the items so we have to fill this first column and the way to fill this first column is uh, simple uh, we had uh, sorted in this order descending order we have to fill this column in the ascending order in the opposite order of in which we had sorted our order list right? we had an order we have to now fill the items in the opposite order all right so first thing will be d then there will be c then there will be a okay done next we have to find the conditional pattern basis this means this d there are several d's okay how did we reach this d or for this c this is a c and this is a c how did we reach this c this a how did we reach this a and how many times did we reach this a using this path that is something that we have to find okay so let's go ahead and find it uh, i should find b first sorry i should find d first then i should feel c then a but uh, i am going to do it in the opposite uh, manner right uh, there is no reason just for the sake of this class i am going to fill it in the opposite order all right so a how did i reach a i came from null to b and then b to a right so i came from null i don't need to write null because every path will start from null so writing null does not give me any information not going to write that uh, so i got from b and then i reached a a also i do not need to write because i am trying to find what is the path that leads me to a so every path will end with a okay so i don't need to write a at the end i simply write this b and that is enough information okay now how many times did i uh, take this path how many items are there when b and a are bought together four transactions are there okay so i record that as well now let's work for c okay this was too easy and because this is too easy so it might be too confusing so let's work with c there are two paths that lead me to c okay one is this path that goes from b to a to c and one is this path that goes from b to c all right so let us write both of this path so the first path is b a and c and that has a count of 3 second path is b c and that has a count of 3 okay i did not write a over here in the same way i should not write c over here why because c is anyway going to be the end node i am trying to find paths that lead me to c so end node is anyway going to be c therefore i am not going to write this c all right so this is sufficient information how am i reaching this c this b a from this b i go to a and then i reach c how many times am i taking this path i am taking this path three times right so three then i am taking this path from b to c how many times am i taking this path one time okay done next let me work with d okay so there is this d i take this path b to a to c so b to a to c how many times did i take this path only once fine then i have this how many times did i take this path b to a to d this b to a and then d i have taken this path once as well 
then I have this. I have taken B to C and then to D. So B to C and then to D. Okay, once. And then I have this. What to do with this? This item was purchased alone. Okay, this D does not have any parent. Right, so I am not going to write this. Alright, so there is no path that takes me to this. This was uh, a single product. Okay, so this does not have any dependency on any other product. Okay, so going to ignore that. And this is how we have drawn, we have written down the conditional base patterns. Okay, fine. Next, we are going to compress this information and write it over here. Okay, so the thing that I am going to write is this. How many times is B occurring here? B is occurring here three times. How many times is A is occurring here? Not only occurring means uh, there is something else. Let me do with this as well. How many times is B occurring here? Two. Okay. But uh, I am not going to write two here. No. Uh, this B is occurring three times. Right. This B is occurring one time. So this will be four. Okay. This B in this path BAC. This B occurred once in this path BA. This B occurred once in this path BC. This B occurred once. So in total B occurred three times. All right. But here in this path in this C3. Okay. In when taking this path B to A to C, how many times did uh, I take this path? I took this path three times. All right. Therefore, I when taking this path B A C three times, I saw this B three times. All right. So I saw this B three times. I went through this B five times. Three times when going from B A C. One time when going from B A C D. All right. One time when going from B, A, D. One time when going from B, C, D. Right. So in total, I saw, went through this five times. But my question is, when going to this D, to this C, okay, when going to C, I went to C two times. Uh, when I saw B A C, this path I took two times, and this path B A C D I took one time. All right. So this C when reaching this C, I reached this C two times when reaching when uh, going through this, right? And I reached this C one time when going through this. All right. So this is how. Uh, I have reached this B while reaching this particular C. I saw this B three times. That is what this means. Okay. So I I took this path three times. I took this path one time. Okay. What is this one time? There is this. See, I am looking at C, right? I am looking at the other C now. Talked about this. When uh, looking at the, uh, this C, I reached this B three times. When taking this path, I took this path only once. All right. When I was filling B, C, D, I had this transaction. I took, I went here, I went here, and I went here. Okay. When doing this to reach here, I went through this once. Okay. So to reach C, this other C. I took, went through this B once. When reaching this C, I went through this B three times. So in total, I have this 2C. In total, to go through this 2C, how many times did I go through this B? Three times when taking this path, one time when taking this path. Therefore, in total, four times. And this is what it means. Okay. So understand the meaning. Now, calculation is really easy. Okay. Uh, 
for example let me calculate for a a will be 1 is 1 plus 1 2 times occurring here okay for c c is 1 plus 1 2 times occurring here what about a a is 3 times over here and none over here to 3 here b is equal to 4 you just find out uh, to fill this for exam or to fill this for your program you just make a count of how many times it is appearing in how many uh, sets it is appearing and what is the count associated with this set okay uh, so if I had say x y z with 4 x y with uh, 3 and y z equal to uh, 2 and I find to find conditional fp3 and I want to find for say x okay what will I do x is here x is here x is not here right therefore I will find for this x what is this value 4 that means I would have taken this path 4 times uh, for this x what is the value 3 so 3 therefore x will be x will have the count how many times do I see this x will have this count uh, 7 all right so this is what we do actually uh, finding this value how many times did I see this note when reaching some note say uh, this is to reach some p okay so my 3 will be from null there is x there is y there is z and there is p for this it means there is x there is Sorry. x y and then p okay and then y z so there will be y there will be z there will be p okay this is what the tree would look this is what the p would look like in the tree there will be other nodes if there is q somewhere over here it may be there but at least the p should look like uh, in this way if this is the fp tree all right so point is how many times am I reaching each of these nodes when trying to reach P okay so this is how we do this calculation very simple to calculate but then do understand what this thing is telling us all right if you simply calculate and do not understand what this thing is telling us then uh, you will not be able to do uh, data analysis properly you will be able to pass the exam that is not a problem but my aim here is not to just make you pass exam. Aim here is to make you good machine learning expert. Alright. So this is what we have. Now we have uh, created this conditional FP3. Okay. Now our final thing is to calculate these frequent patterns. So this is the count that we did in our last slide. Okay, where is the A? Okay, there will be a, a over here, I made a mistake. So, yeah, this is what we have. Uh, so now we have to generate the frequent pattern. Frequent pattern with D. So there will be D, B, there will be D, C, there will be D, A. Okay. So there will be more. I forgot about A. But then. Uh, 
Okay, uh, let me once again do from the reverse direction. We will handle this at the very end. Made a mistake. A will be two. Okay, Let's set is not over here. Let's say it gets over here. Let's start with this. So B A. Okay, I'm making frequent pattern with B and A, and this has a support of four. This is what it says. Now let me make frequent pattern with B, uh, with C. So B C will be one frequent pattern. B A will be one frequent pattern, and B A C will be one frequent pattern. Let us find support of each of them. Okay. How do I find the support? B C. So B and C will have a support of four. Okay. B and A will have a support of three. Okay. Now, interesting. What is B A C? B A C. B A C will have a support of what is the lower among these three? Among these two, four and three. Uh, the lowest is three. Therefore, this will have a support of three. Right. So this is what we have. Now, this this is uh, not going to be sufficient. I am going to find some uh, frequent pattern with this. All so uh, B D will be one pattern. Okay. B C D will be one pattern. A D will be one pattern. What is the support of BD? BD will have a support of 3. What will be the support of CD? CD will have a support of 2. What will be the support of DA or AD? AD will have a support of 2. Okay. Fine. Now let's make a pattern with 3 objects. So that will be D, 3D, there will be B, A, D, there will be B, okay, let me show for uh, B, C, D and B, A, D, okay. Uh, there will be lots of possibilities. So let us not do all of them. So B C D. Let's go ahead and find that. So B has a support of two. C has a support of uh, B has a support of three. C has a support of two. Therefore B C D will have a support of what is the minimum among here? Two. All right. So B. Then C, then D will find the support of two. Okay, once through here and once through B, C, D, taking this path once, taking this path once. All right. So this is how we do this compression. We were looking at how to do this compression. Okay. So this fact that I have this B. C D once over here and B C D once over here. I want to compress them and make sure that I count this pattern occurring together two times. This is how I am counting it two times. All right. So this is what you do. There will be lots of uh, possibilities here. Okay. So you have to do this count lots of times. It's at least less than uh, the number of possibilities in a priori. Far less than. Uh, the number of possibilities in a priori. This is polynomial, not exponential. All right. But then uh, this is how we do this count. Now, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and fill this table. Okay. So this is what we do. This is how we have filled the table, right? And these are the frequent patterns that we have generated. Okay. Now. B A 
is often brought together this has a support of 4 okay that means uh, there are four transactions in which B A were bought together uh, when buying uh, A. Okay. Now when buying C, B A was bought together three times, B C was bought together four times, A C was bought together, and B A C was bought together three times. Right? B A C. There are four, three. How many? Three transactions in which B, A, C were purchased together. There were four transactions where B, A, uh, B, C were purchased together. Right. So in this way we get all these frequencies. Right. So lots of calculations we have to do. Once you write a program, you don't have to do all this calculation manually. Now uh, here there will be lot more. I forgot to generate with A. I made this mistake of not generating with A. I ended up ignoring A, should not have done that, okay, so that would generate a lot more pairs over here, over here, okay, but uh, no matter what, you have to follow the same rule like we did in the other sets, you can generate for this set as well, okay, now uh, what does this mean, what does this mean, let us pick one of them and talk about this. It mean, this means that B and A are frequently bought together, these two items. Therefore, I can generate a rule B implies A or I can generate a rule A implies B. That means a person who comes to buy B, go ahead and suggest A to that person. A person who buys A, go ahead and suggest B to that person. There are two rules that I can generate. Now, which of this rule am I going to choose? That is something that we are going to discuss at the end. In the same way, we can we generated frequent item set in A priority. We did not discuss how to create rules. In the same way, we are discussing how to generate frequent item set. We have generated all these frequent item sets, right? We are not uh, discussing uh, how to uh, create rules yet. Okay. Now one thing. My mean support is equal to 3, so this, this will go away, okay. So what are the ultimate frequent sets that I have? I have BD, I have BC, I have AC, and I have BA, okay. I have this, 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 and this. These are the two items frequent set. What are three item frequent set? BAC. Okay, this is a three item frequency so I have generated frequent item set like this from this I have to generate rules all right we'll talk about rules at the end this is a priori uh, this is FP growth algorithm all right now uh, think about this how many times did we scan the data set okay we scanned the data set one time when we were creating this table of support when creating this table filling this table we did a scan of this data set and then we scan the data set once when sorting and creating this tree okay uh, this sorting that we did from abc to BAC. This is one sort. We, as soon as we did the sorting, we can insert it into a tree. Okay. It is not necessary that we do this sorting once uh, and then we scan it again and then create the tree. As soon as we do the sort, we can insert the transaction into the tree. We sort this from this to this and then we insert this into the tree. All right. So, uh, in total, how many times we are scanning? Once at the beginning and once at the end, two times with two scan. Uh, compare this to uh, a priori. In a priori, we could expo uh, generate an exponential number of item set. Each of, for each of them, we have to uh, do a scan of the uh, data set, right? So an exponential number of times. Uh, this is far better. Uh, in a priori, don't uh, worry too much, okay? Uh, Theoretically, we can scan for an exponential number of time, 
but a priori is actually good it's not bad uh, we stop much early and we do lots of pruning okay so we do not actually scan it for an actual number of time we could potentially do that but we do not usually do that a priori is good don't hate a priori epigrot is also good will give you equal information uh, but yeah this is what we have all right now the next let us look a little bit about the difference between a priori and epigrot epigrot is faster runtime increases linearly with increase in number of items set okay so this is slower here runtime increases exponentially with number of items set okay so if number of items increase uh, there is a exponential increase in time okay memory uh, is uh, requirement is small because we just stored a tree here all the candidates the exponential number of candidates that could potentially be generated have to be stored okay uh, candidate generation in fp group there is no candidate generation here we have candidate generation frequent pattern uh, we get this pattern by analyzing the tree by mining the tree here uh, we generate candidate and then we see if the support is being uh, achieved all right then scan we only require two scan i said at the beginning when uh, finding the support and at the end when ordering and inserting into the tree now uh, here we scan over and over again in a priori all right so these are some differences between a priori and epigrot epigrot in case our data is very big epigrot is the way to go but in case our data is small and handleable and we know uh, the item set is not going to be large all right so 3 4 item Uh, four is the maximum say size of item set right and number of item uh, number of items is small in that case if you can go ahead and use a priori it is also good not bad but epigrot works uh, better scales better all right requires less memory faster so lots of advantages okay now we are going to look at one more algorithm all right but uh, don't worry too much about this algorithm i just want to show you this algorithm because up to this point we were uh, working in this way i had a transaction here transaction 1 transaction 2 and items here so item 1 item 2 in this way okay so this is item 3 item 4 in the next algorithm we use a transpose kind of thing of this not exactly a transpose but uh, you will understand the algorithm is called eclat algorithm e c l a t right the full form is equivalent class clustering and bottom up lattice traversal okay it is a bit uh, efficient than a priori not as efficient as fp3 this is also a uh, generate and scan kind of algorithm right a priori is horizontal horizontal i mean uh, there is transaction 1 transaction 2 in this way and then item 1 item 2 in uh, this yes yeah, so item 3 item 4 and item 2 say let me repeat item 2 2 times uh, what is going to happen in uh, eclat is uh, i will have items over here items 1 item 2 item 3 and transaction will be over here okay so item 1 is there in transaction 1 uh, uh, item 2 is there in both transaction 1 and transaction 2 okay item 3 is there in only transaction 1 item 4 is there in transaction 2 all right item 3 is there in transaction 2 sorry so this is uh, vertical this is horizontal if this is horizontal then you will call this vertical because it's a transpose kind of thing uh, not exactly a transpose in the linear algebra sense but uh, looks like a transpose 
okay this is our uh, original data set as given to us uh, in uh, this a priv and fp3 the trans uh, transactions are over here the items are over here this is like before okay from this we transpose this is not exactly a transpose okay let me call this pseudo transpose to this now uh, yeah in how many transactions are there where braid is occurring braid is in t1 okay t4 t5 t8 t9 so we write that over here okay so cook is occurring in transaction 2 and transaction 4 Right. So in this way, we transpose our data set. Then what we do? We have we have done this for item set of size one. Let us now work with item set of size two. Okay, this is item sets of size two. Now I find bread and butter. They are occurring in T one. Okay, T four. T8 and T9. Okay, so that is what I have written here. So in this way, I figure out item set of size 2. Here, my mean support I have taken as 2. Okay, so uh, and it, this will go away. This is less than mean support. This will go away. This is means uh, less than mean support. And then I will go ahead and make uh, this uh, item set of size 3. So we make item set of size 3. And uh, we have two potential item set of size 3. Okay, so this uh, bread butter milk is occurring here. Bread butter milk is occurring here. Then bread butter jam is occurring here. And bread butter jam is occurring here. Bread butter jam. Okay, so in this way, I have uh, reached here. And then there will be, yes, there is one. Four uh, item item set, but uh, this has a uh, support of only one. Therefore, I am going to remove this, and then I cannot make any five item item set. Okay, this is not considered. Why is it not considered? Because uh, uh, the threshold is not made, right? The threshold we had uh, fixed as 2. Okay. So this is what we do. This uh, is one more algorithm. Don't worry too much about this algorithm. The re reason I am showing you this algorithm is because uh, because of the transposed way in which this algorithm works. And I just wanted to show that there is also this technique. Don't worry about this algorithm. Study a priori properly and study FP growth. Okay. You can do this as well. Okay, once uh, if I give you a problem in Eclat, you can go ahead and solve that. Of course, uh, the reason I'm showing you this algorithm is because uh, till now we have worked in horizontal manner, right? In both a priori and uh, FP growth, we have worked in horizontal manner. Here we are working in a vertical manner, right? Instead of counting uh, means. Uh, these items we are counting transaction so yeah, this is what we have okay okay uh, we are going to conclude this video by talking about this topic that we did not talk about yet given a frequency set a b do i choose a implies B or B implies A or both. Okay. Given some frequency, set, what is the association rule that I generate? So that was one question that we did not answer. Till now, we have been talking about how to generate frequency sets. All right. We had generated frequency set like this, but we did not yet talk about how to mine this rule. All right. So association rule mining is our ultimate aim, not generating frequency. Let us talk about this. 
we need a criteria called minimum confidence okay so say we had set a minimum confidence of 70 percent all right and say using some algorithm uh, our support say mean support Plus two, okay. Say using a prime simple algorithm, we have found milk and juice to be a frequent pattern. Okay. Now question is, do I choose milk juice as a uh, association group? Do I choose juice to milk as an association rule or do I choose both of them? I am going to find the confidence of both. Now if you remember the formula for confidence, uh, I have to find how many times is milk occurring. Milk is over here, here, here and here. So four times. In these four times, all right, all the times that milk is occurring, in how many of them is juice occurring? This is occurring in two of them. So this is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, confidence is 50%. What about this? If someone is buying juice, do I recommend milk? So this person is buying juice. Okay, there are two transactions in which juice were bought. this and this in all these transactions where juice was bought in how many was milk also bought in both of them milk was also bought all right therefore my confidence is 100 percent all right my minimum confidence is 70 percent i am not going to choose this association rule milk implies juice i am not going to choose but juice implies milk i am going to choose all right that means if a person is coming to buy juice, I am going to tell that person, do you want to buy milk? But if a person is coming to buy milk, I will not tell that person, do you want to buy juice? All right. So instead, what am I going to suggest to that person? Let us look at this milk and bread. Right, so going to find confidence of milk implies bread, and going to find confidence of bread implies milk. All right, so this, 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 and this, and this. All right, hold on. Let me work on the first one first. All right, first one here. How many transactions are there when milk is bought? Here, here, here. And here there are four transactions where milk is bought out of these four transactions how many are there where bread is also bought so this this and this there are three transactions where bread is also bought so three out of four this is 0 0.75 so I'm 75 percent confident that milk implies bread okay so this passes my uh, minimum confidence so I'm going to choose this uh, rule okay let us look at the other rule bread implies milk so this 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 and this there are four transactions where bread is bought out of these four there are three where milk is also bought All right once again 0 0.75 so this is also something that i'm going to choose all right so think about what we were doing last time last time i had this frequency of milk and juice all right from this if someone is coming to buy juice i am going to suggest milk to that person all right but if someone is coming to buy milk i am not going to suggest juice to that person why because my confidence in milk implies juice this rule is not above the minimum confidence threshold that i had said all right but uh, this passed the confidence threshold here, I, if someone is coming to buy milk, 
I am going to suggest bread to that person. If someone is going to come to buy bread, I am going to suggest milk to that person. Both of these are passing my minimum of confidence threshold. Okay. Now, uh, if you have this confusion, okay, let me not uh, explain to you using examples. I'll just talk with you. Okay. If you have this confusion, say someone is coming to buy milk, and then there are two rules. Okay, uh, rule number one says uh, milk implies bread. Rule number two says milk implies diaper. Okay, now milk implies bread has a higher support and good confidence. Then I'm going to suggest that first. Then I'm going to support uh, suggest diaper. So the one that has higher confidence, I'm going to use suggest that first. But it should not be a single uh, criteria. Okay, uh, I should also look at support. The if my support is high, uh, then I should focus on that as well. So how you do this is up to you. Okay, right now I am just giving you ideas on uh, what are the things to look at, how to generate rules and how to do suggestion okay so the more confidence there is i'm going to choose that but if something is bought only five times okay uh, say uh, a person uh, bought milk and juice okay together so from juices perspective i i am going to suggest milk okay but uh, how to give you an example uh, yeah this is what it is okay if something is bought a very large number of times together i am still going to suggest that even if something is bought very rarely together that has a higher confidence okay so yeah that is what i meant that uh, not only confidence i am going to also look at support if something is bought a large number of times together then uh, going to suggest that okay But uh, here in our application, in our kind of transaction, that is not going to, this problem is not going to arise because we are looking at this from only one side. Okay. So don't worry about all these things. This will be uh, advanced topics that you can study on your own. We are not going to go into this. Now, uh, there is one more thing in recommendation engine system that we are not going to touch in this course. But I want to give you a general idea of how that works. Okay, say uh, in Netflix. Okay, uh, how to recommend a movie? I can find say Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I can find similar uh, movies, right? I can find similarity using uh, lots of similarity measures are there. We saw uh, how to use having distance to find difference between title so harry potter and the chamber of secrets would be nearer to harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban than it would be to harry potter uh, uh, say uh, than pirates of caribbean okay so i am going to suggest harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban okay so this is uh, direct content uh, similarity how similar is my content to one another based on that i can do recommendation okay but there is another technique of doing recommendation. A bit like what we have studied here, but uh, not exactly. What we are going to do is first, uh, I am going to see, say, I want to suggest to uh, Mr. X and Mr. Y. There are two people. I want to suggest to Mr. X. Okay. Uh, I am going to find all the users that are similar to Mr. X. So, say Y is a user that is very similar to Mr. X. Then what I'm going to do is, uh, so similarity in things that Mr. X and uh, Mr. X watches. So out of all these things that Mr. X watches, I'm going to find a similar user. Say Y is a user who watches things, whose choices of things are similar to uh, the choices of Mr. X. So Y would be a similar kind of user. So 
I am going to see what Y is watching. Okay, and based on that, I am going to make recommendation to Mr. X. This is called collaborative filtering. Okay, and uh, nowadays this is the popular technique to do recommendation. First, find users who are similar to you, and then do recommendation. But uh, this does not make sense in our. Uh, application that we have seen in this video because in this video uh, I cannot rearrange big bazaar for every user right so uh, just because this user comes in and he likes electronics so I completely keep electronic stuff near him and then some other user who likes cosmetics so I suddenly bring cosmetics to the front door that is not possible so I have to do in general these are good techniques to do this stuff in general all right but uh, yeah, understand that recommendation uh, is more complicated. You can do user specific recommendation, All right. not only item specific. We have been doing item specific recommendation in this video. So to conclude, uh, we saw what is association rule mining. We saw what is support, what is confidence. Then we saw three algorithms to do uh, association rule mining. Or two of them we saw in depth and one we saw at a very high level this eclat algorithm at a very high level then uh, this algorithm uh, taught us how to uh, create frequent patterns uh, frequently bought item set items that are frequently bought together how to find those kind of set of items all right and then we finally concluded by talking about uh, from this frequent set how do I actually mine these rules? All right. So we have this association rule. How to get this association rule? One set can give us multiple association rule. Which one do I choose into my data set? Right. So that was all the content for today's video. Thank you for watching this video. And if you have any doubt, feel free to reach out to me through WhatsApp, through mail or by writing your doubts in the comment section below. See you in the next video.